this is Bishop Greg Brewer again. This is the fourth day of convention, and it is the evening, and this is my report. Obviously, the big news is, of course, gay marriage and the Supreme Court decision. The question is, how has that affected general convention? Well, it certainly affected the opening Eucharist, where there were cheers and huge celebrations. Some were elated, others were deeply sad, quite frankly but it has profoundly affected the mood of general convention. The question is, will it actually affect our legislation? There are still concerns among people because of things like canonical conflicts, and so there's really no guarantee of what actually the product will wind up being. There's still concerns about wanting to keep canon and prayer book intact, while at the same time creating some kind of alternate or proposed right. Uh, meaning a service for, in fact, gay marriage. None of that, however, has any guarantees to it whatsoever, so we're still praying and taking this one step at a time. The next thing, of course, is the speculation about who's going to be elected the next presiding bishop. Elections are tomorrow. We will meet in the morning for Eucharist, and then all of the bishops are going to get on a bus and go to St. Mark's Episcopal Cathedral, where we will be sequestered and we will continue to vote until there is a clear majority for one candidate. In discussions that I've had with bishops, one of the things that has been interesting is that when the bishops were presented two days ago, it actually has changed some people's minds. Candidates who were not taken seriously before now have a certain amount of ballast and support. So at this point, it really could be anybody's elections. There was a lot of talk about it being a shoe-in for one candidate or another. At this point, it's a far more open field and it remains to be seen. Another thing that happened today was the Virginia Theological Seminary Center for Anglican Studies, and VTS has a large presence in the display area, hosted a symposium on Anglican missions. Present were the primates from Pakistan, from Korea, from Brazil, as well as a man by the name of Graham Kings, who is the Archbishop of Canterbury's appointee for world mission. Graham Kings had been a bishop in the UK, still is, but now he has a much expanded responsibility. I actually had lunch with Graham Kings yesterday. We had a delightful time together. The man loves God and is really on a mission. And the kinds of conversations that were held at that symposium has marked a wonderful sense of international cooperation. Today really was International Visitor Day with representatives from, gosh, 10 or 12 different churches from around the world, including official representations from the Church of England, not including Graham Kings. So today was certainly a sense that we, the things that we are engaged in really are a part of a wider conversation than just something that's happening within the context of the United States. And that gives me actually personal hope. It causes us to take seriously subjects from everything from issues around immigration and migrant workers to the wider impact that questions like gay marriage will have on the communion as a whole. As you know, I continue to serve as the Chair for Evangelism and Communications, a combined committee. And the reason it was combined, quite honestly, was that many of the people who are involved in communication wanted to create new opportunities through digital media for evangelism and reaching out, especially into the non-Christian culture. Some of the resolutions that we've been able to craft have spoken to that directly. Everything from new mechanisms for evangelism through the social media to the calling of a summit for evangelists and people interested in doing evangelism, a national summit. Now, obviously these are resolutions we're really excited about. And I think it's actually not um, an exaggeration to say our committee is actually having a rollicking good time. And it's been a wonderful respite. The fate of those resolutions is still up in the air because they will have to be passed or not or amended when they go before both House of Deputies as well as House of Bishops. But we feel like we as a committee worked very hard to produce some things that actually could further the work of the kingdom and extend the life of the church. And for that, I've really been very, very grateful. So at this point, you can tell we are about a third of the way into the journey. 
much is in front of us and of course tomorrow the big news will be who will be the next presiding bishop and what impact will he have on the future of the Episcopal Church and our relationships in the wider communion. But that's tomorrow. In the meantime, I continue to be grateful for you and for your prayers. And I also want to say that our deputation, even though it's really hard work, is really enjoying each other's company. Thank you very much.